Hi, you're watching Analog Output. I'm Rich Holmes, and this time we're going to be looking at the Even VCO module from Befaco. This is a Eurorack voltage controlled oscillator. It's got the usual sorts of analog outputs pulse wave, sawtooth, triangle, sine wave. Also has an unusual output they call Even, which is a waveform that has almost no odd harmonic content to it. Kind of unusual. You're listening to it now. I built this module from a kit. You'll be seeing that, and you'll be seeing me testing the module. And I found a, a rather interesting problem, but not, as it turns out, a problem with the VCO. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning. Here is the Befaco Even Oscillator Kit. So we've got instructions, which are pretty much step-by-step, step, not a lot of verbiage or explanation. And this is the uh, calibration procedure here in a flowchart. This is the flat stuff. That's your front panel here and two circuit boards. This circuit board is the uh, uh, hardware for the front panel and it includes uh, a surface mount IC and some surface mount passive components uh, pre-installed for you. And then this is the main circuit board. It also has a couple of uh, surface mount ICs pre-installed. Got a knurly inside sticker and a Defaco sticker or decal or something, whatever it is. <laughs> a power cable. This is ICs, six ICs and six sockets. And then everything else is grouped in bags. This is for the, they're broken down by main board and Component board, control board, I guess they call it. So these are resistors and diodes and that sort of thing for the main board. This is bag B for the main board. And it's, looks like capacitors, got a power header, uh, some trimmers, and yeah, control board bag A, which is resistors and diodes and trimmers. And then we have our, some potentiometers and a switch and a bunch of jacks. Three knobs and four knurly screws for mounting in the Eurorack. 
I spent a few hours yesterday, got as far as mounting all the resistors, all the diodes, the two ferrite beads, the six uh, IC sockets. On the ADSR I built recently, I was trying out a technique where you uh, insert all of the resistors at once and then solder them all from the upper side of the board. I decided not to do that this time. It's not necessarily a bad technique. It's probably a good technique, but I was having trouble with it. I had to go back and retouch probably at least half the solder joints on the bottom anyway. Maybe I'll go back to this uh, on a future project with a lower part density and less at stake, but I felt I should go back to what I was more familiar with for this one. Did run into a couple of problems. One is that if you look on the circuit board at R16 and C12, R16 is labeled next to, not directly over where R16 is, and it's sort of directly over where C12 is. And this is, R16 was one of the first parts I placed, and I hadn't really quite caught on to the fact that the resistors are shown by sort of a resistor shape on the silk screen and the capacitors are shown by a rectangle. So I uh, put R16 in the place where C12 was supposed to be. And then I found that and I desoldered R16. Destroyed it in the process, but uh, turns out R16 is one of the 100K resistors of which there are 10 on this board and presumably by mistake the kit included 20 of them. So, I had spares. I do have a couple of holes filled with solder here where C12 is supposed to be, and I'm going to have to deal with that pretty soon. The other problem is that there's surface mount ICs under two of the uh, IC sockets, and one of these ICs didn't actually fit under the socket. There's sort of a hollow space under the socket, but wasn't large enough for this particular IC in this particular position. So I got out my Dremel and I enlarged the hollow underneath the IC socket a little bit. In the process, I broke the IC socket, split it down the middle, but that was just, you know, just broke the plastic and I just uh, soldered the two halves of the IC socket into place and I think that'll be fine. I spent a few hours putting the components on the two boards and got most of the way through it and then ran up against what looked like it might be a, an issue when I got to the point of putting the jacks and switches and potentiometers onto the control board. The instructions tell you that you have to not solder them to the board but just place them and then put the panel on the front and make sure everything's flush to the front panel. And the way I read the instructions, it sounded as though it was going to require the potentiometers to be floating a little bit above the control board. But I was expecting that not to be the case with the jacks. However, it turned out the rotary switch is taller than the jacks, as well as the potentiometers. And so if you have the jacks sitting flush with the control board, they do not sit flush with the front panel. So I stopped at that point, I went online and went to the forums and also sent off a note to Bifaco and verified that in fact the jacks do not sit flush on the control board. They need to be placed flush to the front panel, you secure them with the nuts, you secure everything with the nuts, and then you solder them in place at whatever height they happen to be above the board. Now, in the case of the jacks, the contacts for the jacks did protrude all the way through and beyond the uh, soldering side of the control board. In the case of the potentiometers, the, the electrical contacts not only don't protrude through to the soldering side of the control board, I'm not even sure they entered the holes at all, uh, but they certainly didn't go all the way through. However, the tabs that are used to mechanically attach the pots to the control board did protrude through. So in the case of the pots, what I did was I soldered the, the mechanical tabs, and then I removed the front panel and I soldered the electrical contacts on the uh, top side of the control board. 
I also went and uh, flowed solder on the other side in case it would do any good, but I suspect it's mostly the, uh, the solder on the front side that, uh, that's doing the work. This is not something they tell you to do in the instructions, but I was just a little worried that if I just tried to work from the other side of the board, it wouldn't really uh, make a good connection to the pots, so I did it this way. And finally, it was time for the moment of truth, trying to power it up and see if it actually oscillated. Uh, I didn't have my good microphone going at the time, so I apologize for the sound, but this is what happened when I first powered up the Pafaco Even VCO. Okay, I just finished soldering the connectors and put the sandwich together, connected it up to the uh, power supply after first making sure we didn't have any shorts on the uh, power connectors and plugged it into the square wave output and we've got a square wave. This is actually oscillating. It's not fully tested but it's actually oscillating. What happens if I try some of these other outputs? There's sine wave output is there. How about the triangle wave? Triangle wave is there. Uh, sawtooth. Sawtooth wave is there. How about the infamous even? There's the even. <laughs> about that this thing actually works this actually works if I go back to the square wave it's actually pulse wave and if I run the pulse with control down change the voltage scale here yeah all right so can you see it? Sort of. So the pulse width control is working. And uh, let's see, it says the frequency is 687 hertz. If I change this thing, it decreases. Increases. If I change this, 244, 122, 61. Looks like it basically works. It needs calibrating, but looks like it basically functions. It's an oscillator. Let's see how this thing's working. Okay, we've got the output, the triangle output plugged into the external audio on the Mother 32, and we've got the uh, pulse wave output plugged into a, a tuner. You can see I've got it tuned up to within a couple cents of middle C here on the two-foot position on the octave switch and okay there it is and if you look at the tuner while I change the octave you can see that that pretty much doesn't move at all. If I go to the 32 foot position, uh, the tuner can't handle it. It's too low for the tuner, but from the 16 foot position on up through two foot, one foot, half, quarter, a little deviation there. Most of the range of this thing is just sitting pretty rock steady within a couple cents of the right pitch. You can hear it too.
whistle territory. All right. So that's good. Now you're listening to the triangle wave. You can also, uh, sorry, that's the sawtooth, not the triangle. This is the triangle here. And the sign. Uh, I'll unplug the tuner and plug into the pulse wave. And here's our pulse width. Control, which is good. We have our even output. All that seems to sound pretty good, and if you look at it on the scope, it looks pretty good. Uh, how about if we take the the oscillator from the Mother 32 and plug it into sync? Then what happens? You're listening to the Befaco oscillator. If I move my mix knob, you're listening to the Mother 32. So this is the Mother 32. Pulse wave. And this is the Befaco even wave. And if I play different notes, they try together. So, sync is working. That's good. I've got the low frequency oscillator going into the mixer on the mother 32 let's take the output of the mixer put it in here okay okay so that's the low frequency oscillator going into the fm input if i crank that up get some audio frequency fm Okay, so that's working. If I bring this back down, bring that down, and plug into the volts per octave input, then you can hear a response to that too. Okay, things seem pretty good. Now, suppose we plug that back in, take the low frequency oscillator out of there and put in the keyboard control voltage from the Mother 32. Okay, so it's tracking the keyboard, but how well is it tracking? Let's see, we're on uh, middle C here, and uh, you see it, we're, we're bang on in tune on middle C. We go up an octave, and look at that, we're about like 17 cents flat. Go up another octave, and we're like almost 40 cents flat. Go down an octave. About 17 cents sharp. Down another octave. We're about 35 cents sharp. This thing it was tracking perfectly with the octave control knob. It is not tracking well at all on the volts per octave input. So what is going on? Well. Really, there's four possibilities. If it's tracking this, but not this, then one of the four things, you've got an input resistance on the volts per octave input. If that resistance is wrong, you get the wrong behavior. You've got a resistance, an input resistance on the octave knob. If that resistance is wrong, you'll get the wrong behavior. We've calibrated it to this, so we get one, octave, one volt per octave here, but if the resistances aren't matched properly, you won't get one volt per octave there. Uh, likewise, you would get the wrong behavior if you're not actually getting the right voltages produced 
at the contacts of the octave switch. And you would not get one volt per octave if you've got the wrong, well, I mean, you'd have one volt per octave, but it wouldn't behave like one volt per octave if you didn't have the right voltages going in on the input. And by the way, it behaves the same way on both of these inputs. So that kind of suggests that it's maybe not the resistance at the input because these two have different resistances, different resistors. So what could it be? Well, we could check the resistance on here and verify the resistance here. That would involve taking this out, taking the panel off, um, fixing it would involve running up the soldering iron. So I kind of postponed working on that until I had more time. But I did check voltages. You can reach in here on the side. First of all, there's the uh, this test point TP1 uh, part of the calibration is you're supposed to set that to 1.5 volts. And I checked that and it, I had set it to 1.5 volts and it still is 1.5 volts. Nothing wrong there. The 5 volt supply is 5 volts. Nothing wrong there. And I was able to reach in and check voltages on a few of the contact points on the octave switch, and they are what they should be. So that's not the problem. I also checked the voltages on coming from the Mother 32 on the uh, keyboard control voltage output. Um, the way I did that was I had it plugged in there, unplugged this end, and got my voltmeter and checked the voltage there. And I was seeing things like, um, well, seeing zero volts at C4, middle C, um, seeing minus one volt at C3, seeing minus 1.99 at C2, minus 2.99 at C1, 2.99 at C7, 3.98 volts at C8. Pretty close, not Perfect, but pretty close, certainly closer than you would need to explain what's going on here. However, what I really should have done, and I told myself this after a couple days, is plug this in to the volts per octave and then check the voltage on the jack there. See whether the voltage here is correct when it is trying to drive the even VCO. So I did that, and guess what? It's not right. It's at C4, it's 0. At C5, it's 0.98. At C6, it's 1.97. At C7, it's 2.96. At C8, it's 3.95. It's losing about 10 millivolts at each octave. Uh, at, at C1, it's minus 2.96 and so forth. And if you go and you try to calculate how much out of tune you would expect to be with one volt per octave and those voltages, it turns out to be pretty near exactly the tracking problem that we're seeing here. The amount that we're out of tune is pretty much exactly what you expect given the voltages that are going in here. So I went online onto the Moog forum and looked around and I found several threads over the past couple of years uh, with people complaining about tracking with the keyboard control voltage output from the Mother 32 and it's and it not tracking at one volt per octave. This seems to be a known existing problem the mother 32. So VCO is good, functions correctly. First time plugged it in and it was doing everything it should do. I was astonished, but can't really use it with this control voltage input. So what do you do? Well, suggested solution on the Moog forum is run this through a buffered multiple. So you buffer this thing and 
the buffer output should be able to drive this thing without the uh, without the voltage sagging. So looks like I need a buffered multiple module. But and we can declare success on the Bifaco even VZO. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button if you did. There will be more videos coming. There will be more modules coming. Hit the subscribe button. You'll find out about them. And I'll see you next time on Analog Output.